Hey, everybody, we are diving deep into the world of communications and network APIs today with Ericsson and their Vonage business. Joachim, how are you? I'm great. Thank you. How are you? I'm well. Thanks for joining in this hot uh, month of August. Much appreciated. Um, of course, many of us know Ericsson and its long storied history, and some of us even know a lot about Vonage going back a couple of decades. Uh, from a consumer VoIP services company to a global business communications leader. Uh, but tell us uh, your, about yourself, your role, and your team within Ericsson, and also give us a bit of an update introduction to Vonage. Yeah, maybe let me start with, with myself. So I'm Joachim Sorelis, as you can see on the screen here, uh, working in Ericsson since 25 years. So I've been working mainly with our core business with this to provide network equipment to our CSP customers. However, since two years back with the acquisition of Vonage, that we're going to cover a little bit uh, later, uh, I've been working with setting up and starting up our network API business, something that we sometimes refer to as the global network platform, the networks as a global platform for innovation for the industry. Hence the title that I'm head of the business unit is Global Network Platform in Ericsson. Right, so you mentioned Vonage. Vonage has been around for a while, and it is a cloud communications company, as you know. And you mentioned the word leader as well. And yes, if you should believe Gartner's Magic Quadrant is definitely a leader in, in CPaaS. And the foundation of the Vonage business is really the CPaaS platform. And this is a communication platform, fully programmable, allows for uh, developers and enterprises to integrate video, communications, voice into their applications in an easy and, and seamless way. And built on this uh, platform, Vonage also provides a number of applications that makes it easier for enterprises to engage with their customers. There are call center applications, unified communication suites, uh, AI platforms, uh, verification suites, and, and so on. So all these tools, if you would like, all these offerings from Vonage build on mobile network APIs. Simple ones from the beginning, SMS, voice, and video. But Ericsson, of course, realized that the mobile networks, the 5G networks, have so many more capabilities to offer than just these basic foundational ones. And given our uh, knowledge about telco products in Ericsson and our relationship with the CSPs and our knowledge about what the mobile networks could really uh, enable, coupling that with the Vonage uh, knowledge about the developers and its reach into the developer ecosystem, 1.6 million developers, 100,000 enterprises plus uh, as their customers, we realized that this was really, really a good fit to start to make these more advanced network capabilities available to developers globally. So that's why Ericsson and Vonage together is sort of spearheading the development of global network APIs that we're going to talk a lot more, more about here. Uh, and it is really this uh, Vonage CPaaS platform that is at the foundation to extend that into more advanced capabilities going forward. So that's a little bit about Vonage and Ericsson and our plan going forward. And it's an exciting plan. Uh, of course, we live in a, uh, a sort of API economy already, but the telecommunications industry is uh, at an interesting stage where transformation, new services and new revenues are much needed. Um, so, you know, how can communications and network APIs kind of together, not just help telcos transform and, uh, you know, reinvigorate businesses, but, but also help their business customers, their B2B customers stay ahead of the competition? All right. So, I mean, network APIs like SMS, voice, and video that I mentioned has been used for the past decade to improve mm. the communication between these enterprises and their their customers. I mean, we're all familiar with a notification SMS will get to remind us about an appointment with a dentist or with a doctor or, or car service uh, repair or something like that that we have booked. Now, as I mentioned, the network APIs could be so much more. I mean, the network has so many more capabilities in terms mm. of authentication, in terms of provide, being able to provide a service level agreement between the application and the, and, the, and the network, what we call quality of service. It has a location capability, like I mentioned. Uh, also, it can provide information about 
many types of information about the device itself, more than location, but also information about the network, uh, what's going on in the network, how, what are how many users are in a certain location, and so on. So we believe that if we could unleash that potential to the developers, not only would they be able to enhance their current applications with with more and better services, but they would also be able to innovate new things that haven't been available before. And I think that all all businesses, main, basically in all verticals, are going through this kind of transformation today, this digitalization where uh, connectivity is a key pillar. And network APIs, of course, will play a key function, the key foundational function in that in that journey on of the digitalization for them. And the ones that enable sort of uh, embraces this early on, because we are in the beginning of a longer journey. We have to admit that mm. it's not all done yet. But businesses that are early on and adopt this early will have an advantage compared to their uh, competition, definitely. Yeah, for sure. And one of the very hot topics we've we've seen for the last number of years is enhancing customer experiences and personalized real-time interactions powered by APIs has been such a hot topic. Um, you know, what are the key drivers for this? Is it is it CX? Is it operational efficiencies? Is it inner innovation acceleration? Uh, you know, what are some of the key talking points that are you're seeing with your telco customers? Right. So I think I mean we should differentiate a little bit about the drivers from the enterprises and developer mm. community, if you would like, as such and the telco operators. So for the enterprises and the developers, of course, the key the key driver is to enhance their current application and to innovate and add new applications that you know they couldn't do before, before they had this, this available. I'll give, maybe give a few examples a little bit later on. But if you think about the telcos, on the other hand, I mean, for them, it's clearly a key that the investments that they have made into the 5G networks, that they can monetize them beyond the connectivity or the regular best effort mobile broadband that they're providing today. And it is a, it is a big opportunity. So there have been a number of studies. Uh, the latest that we have done where we've done a bottom-up uh, an analysis with a partner regarding, you know, as a developer, asking hundreds of developers, if you had access to these network APIs, which ones would you be interesting to use for what purpose and how much do you think you would be able to pay for using this? Mm. Even with such a bottom-up, I would say, conservative um, analysis, uh, we came to a staggering 15 billion US dollar opportunity in 2030 wow. on top of the current CPAS revenues that we have today. So, of course, for telcos, this is a very much uh, wished for and sought after opportunity to actually add additional monetization onto their network. And the interest around Camara and Open Gateway and the standardization initiatives it really shows that the CSPs have understood that there is a big opportunity here and it is important to engage with the ecosystem early on and to prepare their networks to take advantage of this revenue stream. And, you know, Vonage and Ericsson, obviously, given Ericsson's background in the telco business and Vonage experience with the developer community, were really well placed to support the CSPs in, in this journey. So that's that's uh, really great, I think. So I think, I mean, it's clear that for the CSPs, uh, this is a big opportunity to actually add a new new leg to their business operations that will provide significant revenue in the in the years and, and decades to come. Now, it's an exciting journey for sure. And you're right, we're just at the beginning, despite ironically having these APIs for some time. But, um, you know, talk about some additional benefits to the telco operators as well in terms of things like customer retention or maybe market differentiation. It's a very competitive market. I know I personally, as a small business owner, I have three eSIMs, right? So mm -hmm. I have all the telcos in my devices already. So how do you then differentiate what are the kind of services that you think will be enabled by Ericsson and Vonage moving forward? Yeah. So as a, as a telco and, and then for the network API business to sort of pick up, uh, pick up, the first step, I think, is harmonization and standardization. Because as a developer, you would like to make sure that when you provide a, a service, 
um, it's available to all subscribers in, in the particular region or geography where you're operating. It will not be good if if your service works on, on the AT&T network in the US, but not on the Verizon mm-hmm. one, for example. So a certain level of harmonization and standardization is needed for it to work. Then when you look beyond into more advanced services, like quality of service and quality on demand, there the network quality and the network performance can really be a differentiator for for the CSPs because different CSPs might be able to provide different service level agreements, better quality of service, basically, if you are on one than the other. And and this would mean that, you know, as a subscriber, if you have a very important application, you can uh, make sure to choose the, the CSP, the operator that has the best the best offering for your type of application. But I think that's a little bit uh, further out uh, in time because it requires really the foundational layer of harmonization and standardization to be to be in place before you can take the step of, of doing the actual differentiation in terms of CSPs. Yeah, it's, it's exciting. So you're a partner to virtually every telco network operator in the world, uh, almost, you, you know, probably most of them at least yeah. and how do you see the partner ecosystems shaping up it takes kind of this ecosystem to enable third party developers to build on top of the vonage and ericsson infrastructure um how are those developer communities coming along and what else could be done to foster that sort of innovation with third party developers yeah so this is really a question of uh, supply and demand, if you would like, you know, mm. there has to be a certain supply from the CSPs that we talked about, uh, harmonized offering across the geographical area, for example, for the developers to invest in in actually using network APIs uh, in that region. At the same time, for the CSPs to invest in network exposure, there has to be a demand. So it's, sometimes mm. it's a bit we can think of it as a bit of a chicken and egg problem. Fortunately. Uh, there are uh, leading CSPs out there, like I mentioned, that have have realized the potential uh, of network APIs and have started to invest to provide the supply of the first network APIs across uh, many geographies, if not globally, so that you know the demand can start to start to build up. So, but it is uh, for sure a, a bit of an evangelism task, if you would like, to explain to the CSPs that if you build it, they will come. And on the uh, the other Mm -hmm. side of the coin, I mean, explain to the developer uh, community that who doesn't, I mean, that that doesn't know really about the network capabilities and Mm -hmm. what they can do, to explain to them that, you know, if you had access to this, imagine what you can do and then make them put the requirement and demand back on the CSPs to actually provide that supply. So it's a bit of a, we're a bit of a, right now, I think, in a tipping point in that supply and demand uh, conundrum, if you would like. I think Camara standardization and GSMA and Open Gateway has been tremendously helpful in in making sure that the industry starts to move in providing the supply that will generate a demand that will create additional supply and starting this positive flywheel, this positive momentum uh, of investment in, into this industry. Oh, it's a fantastic uh, opportunity. The outlook is certainly bright. And um, do you care to call out any any kind of projects or collaborations you've been working on the, with uh, many carriers on the network API side? How is it shaping up and are, are enterprises starting to get the benefits of, of some of this enablement? Yeah, for sure. Like I said, I mean, Vonage Ericsson, or actually you mentioned it, we're working with, with all operators global on our globally on our, uh, yeah. on our network uh, infrastructure business. And we have had multiple announcements of collaboration together with, with Vonage as well over the last year or so. I mean, we... Uh, talked about Deutsche Telekom back in Digital X last year, Orange mm-hmm. Telefonica, Vodafone, mm-hmm. Singtel, AT&T, Verizon, KDDI, mm-hmm. just to mention uh, a few. Uh, so there is for sure, I mean, our, our goal is to connect all CSPs globally to, to create this global network platform to provide the supply of network APIs to Vonage and to others as well uh, over time. Uh, when it comes to uh, uh, developers, I mean, we st- we did launch in Germany and Spain the first two APIs, number mm. verification and SIM swap, and we start to see 
uh, an interest in the developer community to start uh, working with those APIs and start using it. Commercial traffic is uh, is just about to start to pick up on those on those APIs as we speak. So it's clearly a I think a good good opportunity and a good a good situation to be. We're very we are at this tipping point of where this market is going to pick up. Uh, we also recently uh, launched a collaboration with AWS, Amazon Web mm. Services, to accelerate the availability of uh, the solutions that Vonage have to the millions of, of developers that AWS have on their marketplace. So in particular, this is a fraud protection solution that has been made available that sort of combines the Vonage offering on kamara based APIs, the ones I mentioned, number verification and SIM swap. It includes the Vonage Fraud Defender solution mm. and also use AWS Generative AI to and their uh, their recognition platform to build, to increase the confidence of the end user authentication as, as we go along. You can think about uh, banks, for example, being the uh, customers of this solution where they would, where the system would be able to explain to the, uh, to the bank what is the confidence level of this user actually being the user, the, being the person that they say they are when they're making a bank transaction online, for example. So very, very powerful combination of Vonage and AWS capabilities to provide a real solution that solves and addresses a real use case out there. So there's a lot of, of, of things happening at the, this moment, both in terms of commercial solutions coming into play, but also the experimentation and sandboxing and, and, and things like that. Oh, it's exciting times uh, today. It's great to see all those real world practical use cases and anecdotes. Uh, and, you know, this is setting the stage for future development. Where do you see this industry and your participation in it in a year or two? I imagine you'll, you'll have quite a suite of tools in the toolkit to help mm. developers across the board. Yeah, so when we did this study that I mentioned earlier, like when we did this bottom-up developer study, we saw that the need or the the cap network capabilities that can be valuable to developers, it crystallized in four or five main areas. And those are the areas mm. we're working with. So the one that's happening first, of course, is the identity and security area. I talked mm. about number verification, SIM swap as two APIs in that area. Why is that happening now? Well, it's because it's really rare, so relatively straightforward to, to implement in the mobile networks. Most mobile networks have uh, built in the capabilities already that makes it possible with relatively simple means to expose those capabilities uh, to Vonage and hence to developers. So that's, that's where the ecosystem starts. And that chunk... Uh, actually is very big as well in terms of addressable revenues, around 25% of the total uh, total addressable market of 15 billion that I mentioned before. The next big area, so the biggest area overall is really this quality on demand where an application mm -hmm. can make a service level agreement with the network. What that means is that it can demand and get a confirmation of a certain bit rate or a certain latency or a certain reliability. Wow. And that chunk of addressable markets is around 40% of the 15 billion. So it's by far the largest. In order to do that, that requires some technical uh, features of the mobile networks that are not widely deployed yet, but they are available in several networks globally. It's called a standalone mode of 5G operation. And the use cases we see here is on the quality of demand API, it's it's we often think about you know mobile gaming and remote surgery or yeah. uh, uh, self-driving cars when we think about quality of service and those are important future use cases don't get me wrong but they are a little bit more futuristic where where the developers say that they really see a need is for example in point of sales devices those are small transaction but extremely important in terms of latency and reliability I mean, the vendor has to make sure that the actual transaction goes through and the user must have get the confirmation of the transaction in a very secure, fast, and reliable way. So that's a big chunk of that. The other one is in, in, in the video and broadcast area, both for video conferencing like the one we're having now, 
you want to make sure that when you're on the move that the video is done with a high quality and good reliability. That's not the case on mobile networks today. Uh, but the other one is, for example, also broadcast when it comes more professionally. We show that Mobile World Congress, together with Sony, an application where they could use a regular SIM card, go to any location and start a high, high quality professional broadcast without having to use the satellite trucks or wow. multiple SIM cards and so on that like you do today. So in the quality of demand area, I think it's mainly, or the firstly, it will be in those more mundane use cases, if you would like, point of sales devices, video broadcast, where it will start and then move over into more esoteric and more advanced use cases like the gaming and perhaps even the remote search in the future. Then the rest of this total addressable market that we are looking for as well is, I mean, one important area, which is around 15% of the total addressable market is around location. And here we have a number of APIs coming out. The first one is verify location, where you basically... Uh, the application will ask, is this uh, device in this uh, location, plus minus a range of whatever you decide the range to be, a kilometer or 500 meters or whatever your application requires, and the network will answer with a simple yes or no. Next step of that is, of course, to ask for the precise location. So this is coming. Uh, we're launching it soon. However, this requires a little bit more from, not from the network, but from the interaction between the end user and the, and the CSP, because this is very sensitive information that the CSP is sitting on when it comes to the, the, their customers, right? They can't just give it out without consent. The end user has to uh, agree to provide this information and that consent management has to be fully automated for it to be able to scale. And hence, this is a reason why this is maybe a second, second step. And thirdly, uh, we have all the network APIs that are re related to the device itself. Mm. What status is the device in, for example? Is it on? Is it off? Is it roaming? Where is it? And other uh, things around the network itself. Is the network performing well? Is it congested? Does it make sense for me to even start an application now, given the network situation? How many users are in this particular area? Now with the forest fires in Greece, maybe the authorities want to know how many people are in mm. this particular uh, area of, of the city and how many people do we have to evacuate and so on and so forth. So what I'm trying to say is that, you know, we're starting off with a, with the easiest but very important use case of identity and security. And then over the next uh, months and years, we're going to add more advanced network APIs that allows developers and enterprises to build uh, great applications beyond that in quality on demand, in location, and also in uh, device uh, information. So really exciting. We have a lot to do, <laughs> I would say. So uh, I, I really think this is great. Oh, it is great. And it is exciting. And it's funny how, you know, we get all so excited as developers and industry observers about things like iOS 18 and the new Apple devices coming out. But it's actually the network that drives a lot of innovation as well. And mm. so many opportunities for developers to take advantage of you know, the devices and the networks to create extraordinary experiences while well, we're in August, but we're heading into September. It'll be a busy season in the industry, events and media meetings and get togethers and launches. What, what are you excited about as we head into uh, the fall? We've got Mobile World Congress and many other events here in the US, Las Vegas and beyond. What's on your radar? No, I mean, definitely we have uh, those events that you mentioned. We also have a number of industry events uh, in Amsterdam that are related to this particular industry. Uh, the hyperscalers like Amazon, Microsoft, Google, they have their own events mm. uh, coming up during the fall as well. And they are key ambassadors for Network API as well because they have many developers uh, related to them. So it's definitely going to be a lot of, of debate and, and discussion and hopefully uh, buzz and excitement around the network APIs in the next few months. Well, I'm excited. I, I know you are, but I've been in this industry 30 years, so I'm a total telecom geek, I think, as are you. But I think it's it's really the consciousness of these opportunities is getting into the broader business to business world. So it's exciting to see. Thanks so much for joining and sharing an update and, and the vision. Thank you. It was a real pleasure. Likewise. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for watching and listening. Take care. Bye-bye.